One of those in lockdown is Giramai Mangesha, who lives in one of the towers in Flemington, and he joins us now. Welcome to the Ben Robin Robbo Show. Do you understand why some areas are in lockdown? Hi, thank you for having me. Yes, uh, we understand. Uh, uh, the case of COVID-19 are increasing every single day uh, as a community. We were scared even um, before the lockdown happened how these things are going to be managed. You know, what's interesting is that making headlines at the moment is Pauline Hanson and what she has to say about, you know, the type of people she believes are living in these environments. How did it make you feel yesterday reading that in the news? It was upsetting uh, at the, what she said about us, uh, to be honest with you. But the point is not here to make a political statement uh, and argue with Pauline Hansen uh, to the people, type of people we are living here. Uh, we did not say um, we are against the lockdown. We did not say we are against the testing. We just have, what we said is why they haven't given us enough information, why they are treating us uh, differently because some other residents within the same postcode, they had until 11.59 to prepare themselves. But we had no mm. other warning besides police coming to our door and telling us to stay at home. This is uh, what we are asking. Why don't you do it properly with respect, with dignity and the right way? Do, is that what you feel that you've been missing, respect and dignity? It's interesting you say that because you've been in lockdown since Saturday and so that doesn't give you time to prepare for food, um, supplies, any, even toiletries, anything like that. And I, before the show you were telling me your first delivery was yesterday at 5 o'clock. That's a lot of time to go without those things if you, if you aren't stocked up. Yes, the majority of people that I spoke to, and including me, uh, that's what they are feeling. Why you need to send the police for healthcare uh, crisis? And the first thing that uh, comes to our mind is, yes, as a community, we need to be protected. And yes, we have to follow the direction that the government has um, passed on. But when police are present, the message that we understood, and most of uh, my friends understood, and the people I spoke to understood is, uh, we as a community um, do not follow directions without the presence of uh, police. This is a message that we received from Dan Andrew when he took action. If he sent uh, medical doctors uh, or nurses to trace and test uh, the virus in our community, a lot of people would have, uh, would have had any uh, issue about it. But the way they handled at the beginning with less not time notification, uh, even after uh, the lockdown, we haven't heard anything. No one even came to our door to even check how we are doing. Uh, the well-being of uh, the community is a scary part at this time on top of COVID-19 because there are a lot of uh, young um, children with a single mother, people with uh, health, uh, mental health issues, uh, drug and alcohol issues, mobility issues. And when you tell them to stay in your home without even getting a fresh air, out of a sudden mm. is a little bit scary. Giramai, that's an interesting thing you've brought up, the lack of respect and dignity. Um, do you think this situation has been badly handled by Dan Andrews and his government? Even though the intention was uh, the right one to protect the community and we were happy to even sacrifice our freedoms um, uh, for the sake of everyone in Victoria and, and around the country, the, the lack of respect that is shown uh, and the lack of uh, communication that given to us, it shows uh, rather than nurses and doctors, you deserve a police officer to lock you down. It, is, it send the wrong message uh, mm. to, to us and to everyone uh, who is watching. Yeah, absolutely. Mate, it's Robbo here. Thanks so much again for joining us here on the show. I want to ask you something. Do you think that this would happen uh, if you lived in a big mansion somewhere, if you live in a wealthy suburb? Do you think that there is a lack of kind of communication and direction because you guys are in public housing? Do you think that makes any kind of impact in how they're, how they're dealing with it? Um, honestly speaking, because the virus doesn't discriminate where you live or who you are or the type of classes that you live, uh, but based on that, uh, because they haven't communicated with us properly, 
we already felt that the same thing that uh, you just said. Uh, we, because we are poor from different cultural background and we are living in a housing commission, this is happening to us because there are a lot of buildings who live even across my, my street in Mount Alexander Road. There are buildings uh, at, at the same high as, uh, as us and a lot of people living in that community, but we haven't seen a police present in that area. We don't want to take uh, that kind of argument in here. Yes. We, as a community, we need to be protected, but why don't you give us enough uh, chance to prepare yeah. ourselves? Uh, our neighbors uh, within the same postcode, they had until 11.59 to prepare themselves, but That's we, right. out of sudden, we stuck. It's a very tough yeah. issue, isn't it? Because we are in the second wave of a, of a pandemic. We've seen instances of people in lockdown suburbs changing their addresses on the uh, for their driver's license to get out of those restrictions. We have a fact where it's not just poor people or rich people, everybody. There seems to be so many diverse people breaking the law and not caring about protecting the wider community. I loved what you said earlier that you respect the fact this has to happen because we have to, you know, do the right thing. Um, can you understand why there has been this thought that we need a police presence now because everything else hasn't been working? Uh. Yes, what you have said is um, uh, true, but the point I'm trying to make here is uh, the second wave did not start from our point of uh, residence. The second wave started somewhere else. Those yes. people who break the law, they should be taken into account. So the message you are sending as soon as because of the second wave is happening, you need to be locked down. Okay, you trusted us as a to behave well but you don't trust us to do the, the mm -hmm. right thing. And it's not fair to, 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 to be treated that way. But as you said, some people, they broke the law. Yes, some people, they changed the addresses. Yes, but it did not start it here. We didn't even have a chance to, to change our address. It, everything happened so quick. Mm. Uh, we didn't even have a chance to move somewhere else. So the breaking, the law breaking did not start from this community. The yeah, second wave happened somewhere else when we are punished for it. Look, very think, fair point. I think what's a uh, you know, very fair point and coming from an empathetic point of view, I have to ask you, what's the general feel that's, and what's it like with inside those walls? Like for a lot of people, you know, who are just hearing about this, they probably don't understand what it would be like to be locked down like that. So how is it? What's the general it's, feel there? It's, it's, um, I don't know how to describe. I haven't been to prison, but close to prison because uh, you, we don't get fresh air. Uh, we don't walk around um, in, uh, in the corridors because we have to stay at home unless we have to pick up something from downstairs. That's the only time we are allowed to go out, uh, pick up supplies. Uh, and it feels you are in a cage, close to cage. But day by day, we are managing staying positive because we can hear other people's support prior to uh, what's going on in our areas. And today is fourth day, so we are staying positive uh, for everyone's sex, and hopefully everything comes out um, positive at the end. Give but it's the worst experience I've ever Girma, I think you are amazing. And look, I take your point about the fact that you guys didn't start the second wave. And uh, um, you've actually changed some opinions of mine that I had yesterday. And like, I, I lived in Housing Commission, and I do know some of the discri discrimination that takes place against people in, just, in, in Housing Commission. But I yesterday thought the police presence was just about stopping a second wave. But you've rightly said second wave didn't start there. You guys haven't had any chance to. <laughs> you break the law, you know, like, and there's an assumption you will. So, you know, uh, you've really opened our eyes and, and brought us some really interesting points of view. And I really appreciate you taking the time to be on the Ben Robin Robbo show. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it for you having me. If I, if I can say one more thing. Yes. Um, the government needs to give us a lot of information and need, need to come and knock in uh, every single doors uh, to check the well-being of a lot of people in our community and give us enough information, especially the positive cases in our uh, buildings, which buildings are uh, mm -hmm. that has a lot of uh, positive cases uh, because so that we can have extra protection at this time. And I want to say I appreciate every single person in the community uh, around Victoria, around Australia, for their support and, and, and the donation they are making. We are here together. We will 
puzzle this problem together. It's a Ben, Rob and Rob, oh Ben, Rob and Rob, oh Ben.